Let's talk about Ohm's law, resistivity, and power. I put this on join the resistance. Ohm. Ha, ha, ha. All right, let's talk about Ohm's law. We have an equation for it. Uh, it goes like this: R equals V over I. Okay, let's remind ourselves what are all the units of everything? Well, potential difference, that's in volts. Current is in amperes, so you could say it's volts per ampere, but we do have a special unit for it, right? Resistance is measured in ohms. So let's just take this one here and actually rewrite it. So instead of doing R equals V over I, let's isolate for V. So for example, I'll get V by itself, so I end up with V equals, let's see, it's gonna be R times I. Okay, and if we look at this one right here then, let's uh, do something called linearization. In other words, if we do this one here, this is like a linear equation. Do you remember uh, linear equations here, how they go? Let me just remind you here. Remember something goes like, you know, y equals mx plus b, like a linear equation. Well, then this one right here would be the y value, that would be v. And this right here, i, that would be the x value. And that means this right here then would be the gradient. And if that's the case, then I can say, hey, if I have a graph then of V versus I, right, if that's the Y value, that's the X value, then what can I say? And then I can say then that the gradient of this line then, for example, the gradient will just be R. Wasn't that nice? So something that's following Ohm's law, we say it's ohmic. And what do I mean by following Ohm's law? We mean it's linear. So in other words, this graph of V versus I, for example, will be linear. Now, if something is non-ohmic, that means, you know, the resistance actually changes. Um, then it's something that doesn't look linear. So maybe it's a curve of some kind. So we have another property of materials. It's called resistivity. So each different material has a different resistivity. And we have an equation for it. It goes like this. This is this row here. Is R. A over L. So let's look at the different units for everything. Um, and this, by the way, this would be this length of a wire here. So that's L. That'll be the length of a wire. I'll be measured in meters. We have a resistance across, you know, this because this will be some sort of wire that's got some current going through it. So that'll be the resistance in the wire. Now we have this one here, cross-sectional area. In other words, what's this area of the front right here? You need to know how to find this. This is pi r squared. And this is something you actually get in your data book, uh, booklet, page two. Okay, so what does this mean then? Well, that means, just to remind you then, the cross-sectional cross area then is gonna be pi r squared. And this whole thing is gonna be measured in meters squared. Okay, well then let's try to figure out what are the units of resistivity. Okay, so if I look at this one here, well, let's just look at units. Units of uh, r, for example, that's ohms. So I'll put these all in square brackets for units. Area is measured in meters squared. Divide that by the length, which is in meters. And if I look at this then, what happens? This meter cancels out that one, so that means my units remaining then are just ohms times meters. So that's why the units for resistivity, ohms, meters. Okay, so that's what we needed for resistivity, and we're done then. Okay, this one is awesome. You're a unit of power, Harry. I'm a what? <laughs> that's so good. That's because we're going to talk now about power. And that's because if you run current through something, through a wire or a resistor or whatever, they heat up when the current passes through them. You can feel that in just about any circuit. And if they heat up, that means there must be energy loss. So this we call this energy loss a power dissipated. That's the you that's the, the sort of phrasing that we use here. So power dissipated, that's the energy loss uh, due to heating up. So we have an equation for it, and it goes like this. There's three different versions. So first of all, it goes P equals IV, and then it's I squared R, and it's also equal to V squared over R. Now we have these three different versions because it kind of it just all depends on what you know. If you know the current and the potential difference, use this one. Uh, if you know the current and the resistance, use this one and so on. And actually it turns out these ones right here, you can derive these by just using, for example, V equals IR, you know, this uh, Ohm's law or R equals V over I. And that means that instead of uh, V, for example, I would replace it with IR. That means we have I times IR, which is I squared R. See, that gives you that one. Or if I replaced I here, and then I could know that, okay, I equals, let's see, it's going to be V over R. 
That means I would replace this i then with a v over r. So I have v times v over r, that gives me v squared over r. So you see, so you can actually kind of derive them all. So the important thing is this power. Power has units of watts. Uh, current, of course, has units of amps like we had before, amperes. We've got potential difference, units of volts, and we've got resistance measured in ohms. Okay, don't forget, though, that power is also equal to work done, uh, all that over time. And I like to think of it as it's equal to energy over time. This is a really, really key thing here. If you look at this here, it's going to have units, right, of joules per second. So I think of power as, yes, it's in watts, but it also is in, you know, joules per second is another way to think of it, right? Because it's the energy over time. Now, why is this useful? This is so important for your exams because sometimes you'll get a question that looks really confusing. It's confusing because it's, it seems to be mixing different topics. So for example, let's say we have this thing like, oh, we have a motor and it lifts a mass uh, a certain distance h. So it lifts it up, you know, a certain distance h in a certain time. And then they might tell you like, what's the uh, current in the motor or something like that? Or what's the power in the motor? And you think, oh God, how do I, how do I mix, you know, kinematics with electricity? Well, this is how power is the key. So for example, if you want to do this one here, you'd say, okay, well, power is just going to be the energy over time. And if we think of it that way, okay, do we know something about the energy in raising an object? Well, sure, that's just going to be equal to mgh, all that divided by the time. So it turns out that's how you would solve this. This is how you get to the electricity version of power. So it could also be the kind of question where, you know, you're, you have uh, some water, for example, some liquid, and you're raising the temperature of that liquid through some kind of heater in there. And they might tell you something about, you know, how, uh, what the heat capacity is of that liquid or whatever. And they'll ask you then, yeah, do something with electricity. Maybe like, what's the current through that uh, heater? You think, oh, how do I mix raising a temperature of something to a current? Well, this is how, again, with power. Because you say power is the energy over time, in that case, you'd say, ooh, what's the energy related to raising the temperature of something? Oh, that's Q equals MC delta T. So you'd have an MC delta T divided by time, and then you'd be fine. That's how you get your power, and that's how you go to electricity. Okay, let's do an example then. So we have a circuit here, and we're supposed to find the power dissipated in the entire circuit. In other words, what's the power dissipated here? That seems a bit complicated, so what do we really know here? Well, we want to know, maybe I'll write this down, we want P. Now, we want P here, by the way, though. We don't really care about it at one object here or whatever. We want it here at the battery. Well, that means we can use that equation, right? We can use either uh, P equals IV, or we can use I squared R, or we can use V squared over R. So basically the whole idea is, of course, what do we know? We know V, for example, so that's important here. We know that this here is uh, V. Now, if I know what V is at the battery, well, I either need to know I or R. So I thought, okay, well, how can we approach this? Maybe what we can do is just find the total equivalent resistance at the battery, because this looks really complicated. So let's draw it as if there's just one resistor here. Okay, so if I want to do that, let's just take our timer here. Let's do maybe the first part. So that means I'm going to just uh, keep this on it here. For example, this is my 2 ohm resistor. And what I'm going to do then is just redraw this on it here. I'm just going to redraw this as just some resistor right here. So I'm going to need to find out, first of all, so what's that parallel resistance? Well, I have an equation for that, right? 1 over RP, the parallel resistance, is just 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Well, what do I know here? Well, I know that it's going to be, let's see, 1 over RP is going to be equal to 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4. I've got that twice, so 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4. Well, they're both over 4, so that means I can just add them up directly, so it's 2 over 4. But that's 1 over RP. So that means if I want to know just RP, what do I do? Well, I flip it, so it's going to be 4 over 2. And what's 4 over 2? That's just equal to 2. So that means then I know the RP equals 2 ohms. Okay, that's maybe helpful. So what does this tell me? Well, that means now I can redraw this then as a 2 ohm resistor here. And hey, if I do this then, what can I do? Well, now I'm going to redraw this, um, but this time with a series circuit. So you notice now I'm going to take this. We've got two resistors now in series, so I'm going to redraw them as just one resistor. And how do I find that value? 
Well, here I'm just going to use this equation for the resistance in series, all right? Because I've got two of them, uh, and what do I do? I just add them up. So I've got R1 plus R2. Well, if I do that, then that means I've got uh, resistance in series is just going to be, well, 2 plus 2, which equals 4. So that would be 4 ohms. And turns out that's the resistance around the entire thing. So this one right here, for example, this is what the, the circuit is acting as if there's a single 4 ohm resistor. So that means I know R up here at the top. I know this R value here. Well, hey, if I know R, maybe I'll write this down, okay? So I know R and I know V. So that means what should I use? I should use, um, well, then P equals the one that has R and V in it. So I'll use V squared over R. I'll use that one. That'll be the most useful. Okay, so I'll put in what I know. So uh, what's V squared? Well, V is, let's see, it's 8. So it's going to be 8 squared. Divide that by R, which is 4. Well, 8 times 8 is 64. So i got to think, what's 64 divided by 4? Well, I know 64 divided by 2 is 32. Half of 32 is 16. So the answer is 16. So therefore, I could say the power dissipated in the entire circuit then is 16. And what are the units? It's watts. So there we go. So that's how we can find the power dissipated in the entire circuit, right? We just had to, I thought it was uh, nice if you just use these resistors at least to tell you the total equivalent resistance. That means you just figure out the circuit resistance here, R. And because you know R here and you know V, then you can use your equation for P here to find the one uh, that is relevant. So in this case, we knew V and we knew R. So there we go, we can solve it.